Okay, perfect. So what have we done so far? We started with language modeling last session, and we said that we are not interested in language modeling for the sake of modeling the language. We are interested in it because of the downstream tasks. So we want to do some sort of transfer learning because you have a lot of data on the internet. They are unlabeled. Maybe you can model them. You learn something from them, and then you can transfer your learning to your downstream tasks. Maybe you want to do some sort of sentiment analysis. Maybe you want to do named entity recognition. Maybe you want to do question answering. Maybe you want to do summarization. So these are your downstream tasks. And we want to do some transfer learning. And we actually, when we were doing word vectors, we were doing transfer learning. So we learned our words, the vectors corresponding to our words on an unlabeled uh, corpus on a large one. And then we transferred those to our downstream tasks. Maybe then you had a CNN on top of your word vectors coming from glove or word to vec. And we started with this paper. We said the problem with word vector representations is that you have only one meaning. You have only one word, one vector corresponding to each word. It means that you cannot model the context. For instance, a word like play or bank could have different meanings in different sentences. So what is the idea now? You do some pre-training, you learn your ELMO vectors. These ELMO vectors are coming out of your LSTMs. So in addition to your word vectors, you have some more information. You have some more vectors to work with. This is gonna give you more information. Now the rest of it is going to your downstream task. So these are gonna do your feature engineering for you, these ELMO vectors. And then you go to your downstream task. Let it be question answering, sentiment analysis, name that it recognition, you name it. So there is this paradigm of pre-training and then fine tuning, because at the same time, you could also fine tune these uh, parameters of your ELMO vectors, basically the parameters of these LSTMs. The next paper is GPT-1. It belongs to the same category of unsupervised pre-training and then supervised fine tuning pre-training, fine-tuning. So it's the same category. For pre-training, it's the same as before. So you are predicting the next word. It's an autoregressive model. It's an AR model. Given the context, you want to predict the next word. This is your pre-training. But what are you pre-training? What is your model? Your model is now a transformer block, and it's a decoder part of your transformer rather than an LSTM, now you have a transformer block. For fine tuning, for instance, if you want to do classification, you can keep the same architecture as the one that you used for pre-training and then have different uh, heads. You can have task specific heads according to your task. Maybe your task is classification, maybe it is entailment, similarity, or multiple choice. Now let's move on to the next one. We covered some part of it, so we are gonna continue with BERT. What does it stand for? It stands for bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. Uh, a key point here is this bidirectionality. And the other one is using transformers. And transformers, we are going to use the encoder part of the transformer now, rather than the decoder. Still, the big picture is that you do pre-training, and then you do fine tuning on your task. Pre-training is unsupervised. Fine tuning is supervised, and it's going to depend on whatever task that you want to do. Named entity recognition, question answering, natural language inference, sentiment analysis, you name it. Pre-training, fine tuning. So the first change from before is that you're using the encoder part of a transformer. And that's, and that's hence the name, bidirectionality, because now you are not doing any masking. This word can attend to all of the words in the future, as well as the past. That's why it's bidirectional. That's one change, the encoder part of a transformer. The other change is uh, the way that you're gonna train this or pre-train. Previously, your task was predicting your next word. Now your task is you're gonna mask 15% of your word pieces for each sentence at random. And then you're gonna predict the corresponding word that you masked. For instance, if your sentence is New York is a city, you can mask York, and then you are going to get new mask is a city as your input. And then the task of your 
mask lm mask language model is to predict uh, york so that's one task there is another task that is this is just to help because some of the tasks you're downstream tasks like this one like question answering you have a question and then you have a paragraph it consists of pairs of sentences so maybe having a task like that is going to help maybe inputting two sentences is going to help so what are you going to do you're going to have two sentences a masked sentence a a masked sentence b if they are following each other then this sentence b is the next sentence for sentence a otherwise if sentence b is from a totally different corpus then this is not a next sentence is next or not set, not next so that's how you're going to create your training data and this is going to give you your loss function so your loss function is going to be an addition of the nsp task plus this masked lm task and then you have to properly weight the two losses if you're but, pre-training for a question answering task no. would you want to make sure all the sentence a's or questions and sentence b's are answered no not necessarily okay so during pre-training you are pre-training it for general purpose so you're doing it for whatever downstream task that might happen so no these are not questions during pre-training these are just sentences that are either in the same paragraph or in totally different paragraphs or totally different documents okay that's the pre-training what goes in what is the input the input for instance could be cls cls stands for class my dog is cute a separator because you have two sentences that's a special token he likes playing and then another separator then these are your tokens these are just numbers i don't know 100 256 12 etc these correspond to unique identifiers in your dictionary you take that and you embed it these are your word embeddings and because now you have a huge data set in front of you you can initialize these guys to be random these don't have to be word vectors from glove or uh, word vector word to vec so these could be random then you're gonna have two encoders basically two vectors telling you are you in sentence a or are you in sentence b so there is going to be an embedding for sentence a there is going to be an embedding for sentence b and then you just add them together and we know that because these transformers are going to process your entire sentence in parallel in one pass you're going to lose the position it's not like rnns or lstms that you do it iteratively and you know the order here you're gonna lose the order, so you're gonna add the order back. There is a position embedding corresponding to position one, another vector corresponding to position two, et cetera. And then these are learnable parameters. This is the first layer. The next layers are just uh, the encoder part of a transformer. So we covered it in attention is all you need paper. So that's exactly the same setup. What happens? A sequence goes in, a sequence is gonna come out. The first sequence is for classification. It's a binary classification. Is next, not next. And the other one, you're going to have multiple classifications. And it's basically which word in the vocabulary is going to show up here. So there are multiple softmax here. And then there is a sigmoid function here because that's binary classification. And this is a huge size classification for the size of your vocabulary. That's pre training. So you're going to wait. You're going to wait for a while. You let your GPUs work. And in the end, the parameters of this uh, BERT model or your transformer are going to be put in the right place for your language model. Now you have your language model and we want to go to do downstream tasks. Here you're going to have labeled data. For instance, your labeled data could be in the form of pairs of sentences. So you have two sentences and it's a pair of sentence classification. For instance, natural language inference. Is this sentence a logical consequence of the first sentence? Yes or no? That's natural language inference. And then you have other tasks. These are the tasks of sentence pairs. So these data sets you can explore. And why did you need this classification token? Because the corresponding column is going to give you the class label. So you are going to need to have a head here, by the way, because here you might have multiple classes, three, four, five, etc. So you're going to change the head here. It's going to have some parameters, task specific parameters, and then you're going to learn it. You're going to learn the entire thing. So this part you're going to fine tune. 
this part you're gonna initialize randomly and learn from scratch. If you have a single sentence classification, like sentiment analysis, you just fit in one sentence, that's it. The only thing that's gonna change is that one sentence is gonna go in. And then you're gonna read off the class from here. There is question answering task. This one I'm gonna explain more, so don't worry about it. And then we also covered named entity recognition, for instance, NER. Is this uh, other, is this a person, etc. So this is per word classification. And then you don't need to worry about the class anymore. So you're gonna have your output from this branch of your uh, transformer. So let's go back to question answering. What is the task here? Somebody gives us a question. It's gonna give us the corresponding paragraph. Let's say it's a Wikipedia paragraph. And then you ask a question from Wikipedia. And then the task is, for the uh, machine learning framework to highlight the part of the Wikipedia text or the paragraph text that corresponds to the answer of your question. So this could be a huge paragraph, but then you're interested in, in only a portion of it because the answer is there. Okay, you ask a question and then the machine needs to highlight some part of the text that the, your answer can be found in this part of the text. Okay, how are we gonna formulate this? We need to know what is the start of the highlighting and what is the end of the highlighting. As soon as you know that, then you can just report it. This is the start, that's the end. This is the part of the paragraph that you need to read. You're gonna have some additional vectors. You're gonna have a vector for the start. These are parameters that you can learn and these are task specific parameters. So this corresponds to question answering. That's the start. You're gonna have an end. You can think of this as a question. Is this the start? Is this the end? So these are query. And we saw a query, an example of a query vector when we were doing a, a hierarchical attention network for classification. So here you have two query networks. And then you need to output the probabilities. How probable is that this word is the start? How probable is that the next word in the paragraph is the start, etc. But then if you increase one of these probabilities, the next one should go down. These are mutually ex exclusive. So the start couldn't be located at multiple locations in your paragraph. That's why you are gonna need a softmax on your words in your paragraph. This is for the start. You can have a similar thing for the end. These are gonna give you your probabilities. Now that you know your probabilities, you know your likelihood and you know your ground truth you know that these are one hot vectors. That's the start, that's the end. Now you can train this. You can train S, E, and fine tune the parameters of your BERT. Okay, that's for training. For testing, what's gonna happen is that you need to report that portion of the text that is the most important one. What are you gonna do? You're gonna look at the cosine similarity between this start vector that you trained, multiply it by every single word every single vector that is coming out of your BERT, and that's gonna give you the cosine similarity. And then you're gonna add the cosine similarity between the end and the end words. This is gonna give you your score. So you're gonna have a for loop on i and j. It's gonna give you multiple scores for pairs of i and j. And then you're gonna report the pair of i and j that has the highest score. And that's gonna give you the answer. That's gonna highlight the portion of the paragraph that you're interested in. So what is the message here? You're gonna pre-train, fine tune, and each one of these fine tuning, they're gonna have a small set of parameters that you need to learn, additional parameters. Okay, are there any questions? I see that there is a question on the chat. So it has to be a consecutive highlight, e.g. one line, rather than multiple sections from some location in a paragraph. So yes, that's correct. So it's a consecutive highlight, but you know that you can change this model however you want. If there are multiple parts of your text that needs to be highlighted, you can have multiple start and end points. So you can have multiple S and E's. So does that answer your question? Any other questions? And there is another question. Did you say that the position embedding is also learnable? Yes, so these position embeddings, because you have a lot of data during fine tuning, you can learn them. And these position embeddings, sorry, you're talking about these position embeddings. The word embeddings, you can learn them. The position embeddings, they could be learnable or they could be those Fourier features that we covered when we were doing attention is all you need, the sine and cosine. 
So that's a choice that you make. They could be learnable and they could be uh, fixed and they are going to give you equivalent results. So don't worry about that. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just a bit confused about what is it that we're learning in the regards to the position because I thought that it's where each word is compared to other words. Uh, yes, so the, the same way that you couldn't process integers when you were doing your tokens, your tokens could be 100, 20, I don't know, 256, etc. You couldn't process them. You had to turn them into vectors. The same way you cannot process integers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, et cetera, for your positions. So you have to turn them into vectors because your machine learning framework likes vectors. It cannot process integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, unless you turn them into vectors. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so now I guess I'm a bit confused about the token embedding. So what starts the model from getting, well, how do you know that it's actually learning the position? I guess is my question. It's learning the position because it's the same thing for every single sentence. So every single sentence that you put in, it's going to have the zeroth position, the first position, the second position. That's one sentence. The next sentence is going to have the same ease. The next sentence is going to have the same ease. So after a while, it's going to learn that this E corresponds to the first position. The other E corresponds to the second position, etc. So that's how it's learning it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Okay. I was curious about, <clears throat> it seems like in some cases we concatenate features and in other cases we add them. And is there a, a big difference between the two or is it kind of just like whatever flavor you like? For these embeddings, you usually add because you don't want to add additional parameters. These are high dimensional. And then think, uh, yeah. if you concatenate, you're going to have some more parameters. And then all of your BERT transformers need to be three times as big. Yes. And the other question I had was about these, all of these red arrows that are coming out of the top, like to the NSP and the maxed LM, mask LM. And yeah, so they, they are each individually a soft max. Exactly. So they're going to have their own parameters and they're going to be a softmax on and, top of it. And so in particular, like when you're doing the pre-training, you have an individual softmax at each um, sentence position. Token one has its own softmax and token two has an independent softmax. Uh, for these, you can actually look at where your mask is and then out with only one you can have multiple of these outputs, but then most of them you're going to multiply by zero. So okay. maybe it's more efficient to just output where you need it. Got it. And you know where you need it. There is a mask token going in. In this column, there's a mask token. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.